Today on The Joy of Editing, I'm going to take a flower image and transform it into a painterly image by creating textures in Photoshop using generative fill and applying those textures to the image. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. One of the things I absolutely love doing is taking flower images and adding textures to them. But I want to take it a little step further today. Rather than just adding a regular old texture to an image, I want to add more of a painterly look to the image. In other words, I'll use textures to add a painterly look to the image rather than trying to turn this photograph into a painting. You'll see what I mean. This is really cool and it's really simple to do. And Photoshop's generative feel makes the job really easy for us. Well, I want to make my first texture. I'll probably make up to three textures in this tutorial, but we'll be using Genfill to do it. I'll be running Genfill from the contextual taskbar today, but if you have the TK Genfill panel, you can just as easily use that as well. I do have videos explaining about the TK Genfill panel that you could check out on my YouTube channel. And by the way, it's absolutely free, so I'll also leave a link in the description below this video for you to go ahead and pick up a Gen Fill panel for free from Tony Kuiper, so check that out. But again, I'll work from the contextual taskbar today. If your taskbar is not open, come up here to Window and come down to the bottom of the list and click on Contextual Taskbar. And then see the three dots right here? If you click the three dots, you're gonna be able to pin that bar position by clicking here. And then wherever you move your bar to, it'll stay locked in that position, which is what I like, because I hate when it moves all over the place for you. All right, so here's what we need to do first. We need to select our entire canvas. So you wanna do a Command or Control A to select your entire canvas. Because if you don't, you won't see this generative fill come up here in the taskbar. And then here, click right here at generative fill and type in concrete texture. And then click generate. This will take up to about 25 seconds to generate. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll get right back with you. And I am back. Now here's our first texture. You always get three different results with generative fill. So here's our first result. If you click this arrow to the right, Here's our second result, and I like this one, and click one more time, here's our third. And then you could click this arrow to the left here and go back a step or two. But I think I'm gonna use this second texture, I like it. Now, let's go ahead and apply this to the flower image. What we need to do is come over here to your blend modes. This is a drop down. click the drop down, And now with your cursor, you can hover over these different blend modes. Now there are certain blend modes that work better than others and multiply is usually a good one. Linear burn can be good, lighten or screen can be good. And in this case, I think I'm gonna click on soft light. I really like that. Now I think the effect is too strong. So I'm gonna take the opacity and pull this back a little bit to somewhere right around there. And it's already taking on a more painterly type look, but I am not done yet. This is just the start and the, like I said, the base texture. Now, a lot of times when I'm working on textures on images like flower images, I will reduce the effect on the actual in focus part. But for this effect I'm doing today, I do not want to do that. I want to leave all the texture over the entire image. Okay, it's time to make another texture. So we want to do another command or control A to select the entire image and then click on generative fill. And this time we're going to type in painterly texture and we'll click generate and I'll get right back to you. And I'm back, and here is our texture. I know you're thinking, what the heck are you gonna do with this, Dave? Well, let me see what I can do with it. The first thing I wanna do, right now, I don't like all this red, so I wanna desaturate this. So right now, it is a smart object. I'm gonna come up here to Image and come to Adjustments, and normally you can click on Desaturate, but you can't do that with a smart object. So in this case, I'm just going to go to Hue Saturation and pull back on the saturation till it's shut off completely and click OK. And we still have our three textures here, and we could try all three, but we'll start with this one. So I need to change the blend mode. And again, we can click on the blend mode drop down and hover down through here and try different blend modes. But I'm going to try either overlay. Now, already that looks really nice, doesn't it? Like a painting. That's overlay, and here's soft light. 
So we can go with the stronger look of overlay or the little milder look of soft light, but I think I like overlay. I really like this a lot. So let me click on overlay. We'll accept that as the blend mode. And now I could take the opacity maybe and pull it back a little bit if it was a little too strong, but I really like that. I'm going to leave it up to 100%, but now we could try these other textures if we want to. Now in the properties panel, we can just click on the textures or we could come up here to the contextual taskbar and toggle through up here as well by clicking the right arrow. Here's the second texture, a different look, right? And here is the third texture. Now that's very painterly as well. So we just have to decide on what do we like. And if we don't like any of these, we could go ahead and click generate again and generate some new textures if we wanted to. But I think I like this first texture right here. So I'm just going to click on this one. And then I'll go down to this first texture, the concrete texture, and click on this layer. And, you know, we can increase this texture and see how they interact together. You might want to increase it or you may want to decrease it a bit. Maybe I will. I'll just bring it down a little bit more, maybe to, I don't know, maybe right around there at 50. So here's without this concrete texture, and here it is with the concrete texture. And I think I do like it with a little bit of that concrete in there. Now we could try adding one more painterly on top of here. It may or may not work, but let's give it a shot. This is all about experimenting, and you got to experiment when you're trying these artistic type effects. Before I do that, though, I'm going to come back to the concrete texture, and I think I'm going to pull this back a little bit more to maybe right, yeah, right about there, 35%. And now I'll make the top layer active. Now I'm going to do another command or control A to select the entire canvas, click on generative fill, and type in painterly texture. And we'll try this one more time. I'll click generate, and I will get right back to you. And I'm back and look at the mess I created here. Okay, so here's my painterly texture. So let's come back up here to image and let's go to adjustments and hue saturation. And again, we'll shut the saturation off and click OK. And now we'll come over to the layer and we'll come to the blend modes and we'll change the blend mode from normal. Let's try overlay. Oh, look at that. That looks really cool. That's overlay. Here's soft light. Okay, so it's a little less strong in your face and what do you like do you like the overlay i kind of like that it's really a little more abstract looking very painterly but maybe i'll go with the soft light so i'm going to click on soft light and then again we could take our opacity and pull this back if we want to some i'm going to leave it up the whole way and then i could come back to this uh other painterly texture and now let's play with this opacity maybe i'll pull this back a little bit or leave it up full, what do you think? I might just pull it back just a little wee bit, maybe to right around here. Now then what we could do is take all of these layers and put those in a group. So I have the first layer selected. I'll hold my shift key down and click on this first texture layer. Those three layers are selected. And then I'll right click right here in this first layer and click on group from layers. And now you can name this group if you want to. I'm not gonna name it right now. I'm just gonna click okay. So now I have all those layers in a group. So if I shut this group off, you can see there's our image, turn it back on. But now what I can do is take this opacity and start to pull it back. If I felt the effect was too strong, I could reduce the effect of all those layers all at one time to maybe somewhere, I don't know, maybe around 80%. So here's the before and now here's the after. And now we have a nice painterly looking image. And now as a finishing touch, I feel this area right here is a little dark. So I think I'll use a curves adjustment to take care of that. So we could come down here and click right here and then just click on curves and I'll get the target adjustment tool right here. Click on that. Click right here in this dark area. And then on the midtones, which will be right around here somewhere, I'm going to click right there and set a point. And then on these darker values, I'm just going to drag straight up and just lighten up some of those darker tones in the image to somewhere right around there. And I think that looks better. Look, here is the before and here's the after. But see, it just lightens it up. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Give this a try. If you have any flower images with a nice soft background, this effect can really work nicely on those types of images. And you can generate your own painterly type textures right inside of Photoshop using generative fill. 
If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and then click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.